this is not a time for vagaries. This isn't a time for innuendo or to allow room to be read between the lines. This is a time to lay blame, to lay blame on bigotry, to lay blame on white supremacists, on white nationalism, and on hatred. And that needs to be said. Now, President Trump is still taking heat from Republicans as well as Democrats, as is expected, after condemning the violence in Charlottesville, Virginia. But you know, the controversy continues for his failing to explicitly blame and say the words white supremacy, say critics, and saying that the threat comes from many sides, as he called it. Senator Marco Rubio tweeting this, saying, quote, very important for the nation to hear POTUS describe events in Charlottesville for what they are, a terror attack by white supremacists. And Senator Orrin Hatch writing, we should call evil by its name. My brother didn't give his life fighting Hitler for Nazi ideas to go unchallenged here at home. Were they unchallenged? Judy Miller, adjunct fellow at the Manhattan Institute for Policy Research, Pulitzer Prize winning author and a Fox News contributor joins us now. Well, Judy, I mean, the president did condemn the violence. He did call it out. He said there's no place uh, for this type of hatred in America. But some critics and some Republicans saying it just wasn't enough. Well, I think those Republicans are right, and they've been quiet, a lot of them, until now. But this was an instance in which many Americans saw the video of this young man crashing into a group of anti-racism protesters. And look, Eric, you and I cover terrorism, and I cover terrorism in the Middle East. I'm telling you, this was domestic terrorism. It was an act aimed at killing people and intimidation for political purposes. That's what terrorism is. And for Donald Trump, who spent much of the campaign lambasting President Obama and Hillary Clinton for not calling radical Islamic terror by its own name, for him not to call this what it was, was a great disappointment, a great, great terrible uh, missed opportunity. And that's the kindest thing I heard, and that came from Lindsey Graham. Well, so, so you know, I, some may say I he don't think the he, president did enough. But some would say, well, he didn't have all the facts. I mean, the law enforcement has not put out the details in, in dealing with the suspect. Although we have heard through the media reports that he uh, supposedly was infatuated with Hitler and infatuated with the Nazis and, and was, uh, you know, part of the rally, uh, the, the, the white nationalist rally. Well, as Groucho Marx said, who are you going to believe, me or your own lying eyes? I mean, we all saw that video. It was very clear very early on what was going on here. The president, at very least, missed an opportunity. But I think it became very clear that there are two subjects that President Trump simply doesn't want to criticize. He doesn't want to go by, he doesn't want to criticize the people in his base who happen to share those ideas. And secondly, he doesn't want to criticize Vladimir Putin of Russia. Those are the two uh, subjects and people he simply won't go near. So it's uh, amazing to me that the president was actually tougher on what he calls fake news than he was on real bigotry in this country. Well, the, and it is a terrible, terrible thing. Yeah, the White House, uh, I guess, well, like 36 hours later, did clarify some of this. Here's a statement they gave us saying the president said very strongly in his statement yesterday that he condemns all forms of violence, bigotry, and hatred. And of course, that includes, here's the word, white supremacists, KKK, neo-Nazi, and all extremist groups. He called for national unity and bringing all Americans together. And Ivanka has tweeted, there should be no place in society for racism, white supremacy, and neo-Nazis. You must come together as Americans and be one country united. And then Tom Bosser, the Homeland Security Advisor, you know, he said the president didn't want to dignify, that was his word, dignify the groups by, you know, saying them in the, in the statement yesterday. Do you buy that? No, I don't. And Ivanka Trump, the last time I checked, she may be a very talented young woman, but she's not the president of the United States, nor is the spokesman who echoed those words this morning. He had an opportunity to come out and condemn th what must be condemned, and he chose not to do it. And I think he did that for very political reasons. And that disappoints me. And more than that, it disappointed his fellow Republicans who have gotten increasingly nervous, I think, about Mr. Trump, about his reckless rhetoric with respect to North Korea, who've been looking for an, an, a, an excuse, a justification for distancing himself, themselves from their president. And I think they found it in, in what uh, Donald Trump did not say yesterday 
even though his spokesman and his daughter said it today. Newt Gingrich earlier this morning said that he does expect a stronger statement from the president himself over the next day, you know, or, or so. What, in your view, should he say? What do you expect? I would uh, welcome him to say just what his daughter said and just what the White House spokesman said. But it has to come from him because so many people in this country who voted for him look up to him as president. They're looking for a signal. And the alt-right groups themselves, when the president did not specifically condemn what happened in, as terrorism and white supremacy, when he failed to do that, they started immediately tweeting and reacting on social media saying, you see, he's sending us a signal. This is okay. They have to know this is not okay, not in America. Republicans think that, Democrats think that, and as someone who covers terrorism, I can tell you this is just as reprehensible as what I saw in Nice in France where that truck ro uh, ro mowed mm -hmm. down a bunch of people. We can't have that in this country. Yeah, and the uh, president, it's up to him to condemn it specifically. And, and finally, uh, you obviously very troubled and clearly scared, I mean concerned potentially about the result of that type of silence. Yes, I am, because I know, as someone who's spent a long time looking at terrorist incidents in this country, that the alt-right is far more uh, uh, violence-prone than the left-wing groups that the right always complains about. Does that include the anti-fa? Even, you know, even the anti-fa people? I mean, there's a photo of like a guy supposedly with a... Uh, you know, like a hairspray with fire, and the the critics say the Antifa people oh, you know, bring weapons. And I'm not saying that they are not violence prone, that some of them are not, but in terms of the record, there is simply no comparison between right wing violence in this country and Black Lives Matter. There is simply not. Not yet, anyway. Maybe things could change, people could get more frustrated and violent, but if you talk to terrorism experts, they will tell you the grave threat, the people who blow up mosques, who roll, run their cars into protesters. This is a, a, primarily a right wing phenomenon. I'm not apologizing for the left, not at all. I wanted to call radical Islamic terror radical Islamic terror. So I believe in calling these things what they are. And I think that President Trump should have done that. And I, think, I hope he will. Yep, well, we'll see what he does. There was that protester, as I recall, shot during one of the Black Lives Matter uh, protests in uh, Charlotte uh, several months ago. So sadly, Tragically, there are these tensions in our country. Uh, we'll see uh, what the president has to say. Probably will more about that tomorrow. Judy Miller, as always, thank you. I think we will. Thank you, Eric.